As I was editing this video, I realized that I didn't include all the possible options for substrates that you could use for your Hoyas. So if you have a more technical experience with amendments and additives for your Hoya mix, please leave it in the comments so that we can learn from that. I'm just sharing what I have personal experience with. Hey everyone, today I want to talk about different substrates that you can use for growing your Hoyas. Um, because when I first started, it was really overwhelming when I searched online for what I should be potting up my Hoyas with. Because everybody seemed to have a fancy recipe. Um, some people said they just grow their Hoyas in typical peat potting mix and it did just fine. So I just want to show you the different substrates and then you can decide what you might want to try. I'll start off with saying I don't recommend that you just go buy locally whatever peat based option is on the shelf. Like, you shouldn't just pot your Hoya straight in this. This is going to be too dense, and I'm going to try to show you that later. Um, I prefer to grow most of my Hoyas in LECA. It allows me to be as lazy as possible, uh, just for the way that my mind operates. This is probably one of the most common options for people growing Hoyas. And everybody has a different mix. They'll put different ingredients in their chunky soil. But basically, you're going to use perlite, bark, maybe some cocoa, peat. Uh, some people use charcoal. But anything chunky that allows the water to run through the pot really fast, that is ideal. So. I think most Hoya growers will either use something like this um, and then there are people who are experimenting with Lekka and it seems like Lechuza Pond is now an option that Hoya growers are using. In the United States it's not as easily found so I think um, people in other countries are probably more experienced with this than, than I am. But I have been growing in pond for over a month now, I think. So it's not enough time for me to really have an opinion. But so far those plants are fine. They rooted and they are not dying yet. And then this option I have experimented with for a while. It's called succulent and cactus soil mix. I got it on Amazon. I would say that it is similar to Lechuza Pond in the size of the particles. So you can see down here the size is similar. The difference is there are tiny bits of bark in here which are um, organic but all of the pieces in here are inorganic so they're different types of rocks I believe. But they're both good options. I am growing some small Hoyas just in this so I just poured it into a pot and then I rooted them in it and they're doing well so far. Um, one of them is Hoya Serpens and a few others that I can't remember the names of. So those are good options. Water will run through these really fast. Um, and I, I got these out to show because these are very common substrates that people use to root Hoyas in. This is called sphagnum moss and my package looks like that. Also got it on Amazon. I've read online that you should wear gloves and wash your hands after handling sphagnum moss because it can irritate your skin. So just be aware of that. Um, I did get it wet and then I squeezed all the water out. Um, that's, how I, that's what I would do before trying to use it to root a Hoya. Um, many people like to use straight perlite to root their Hoyas in and they'll stick it in a plastic bag, get the perlite slightly moist, and then stick the cutting in. And here is the infamous peat potting mix. Um, I think mine is from miracle Grow. It's called Moisture Control, but for Hoyas, you don't want to just use this. <laughs> I have used it. Um, I rooted some Hoya Carnosa cuttings in it, and of course that did fine because I think Hoya Carnosa will just grow in anything. So it's not a good test. But I've also killed some Hoyas doing that. Because the Hoya Carnosa did fine, 
I thought that would apply to other Hoyas, and it did not. So, if you are really in a pinch and you need to pick something up locally right away, get some of this and perlite, and then mix them together, one to one. So just dump these in a bowl, mix them up, and then stick it back in. You could use more perlite. It doesn't have to be half and half. It could be like 60-40, 70-30. So the more inorganic material that you use, the more aware of the nutrients you're going to need to be. Like there's no nutrients in perlite or in hydrogen. Um, so that's why you would need to eventually um, fertilize your plants whether it's with typical houseplant fertilizer. I have just started fertilizing all of my Hoyas with the hydroponic nutrients that I use. So even the plants that are in soil, I just water them every once in a while with the hydroponic nutrients and it seems to work out fine. So just be aware, if you're using a really high percentage of perlite, um, you're gonna need to be on top of fertilizing your Hoyas eventually. Sometimes you can get away with like, um, Lechuza pond has nutrients in it, and the the peat mixes usually have nutrients in them. And I think they usually say um, it'll fertilize your plant for six months, and then hoyas can take another six months to really complain that they're not getting nutrients. So you could go a year like I did without knowing that you should be fertilizing your plants. <laughs> so I'm gonna do an unofficial experiment and just show you how poorly this one does at letting moisture go through its little pot because many people are having issues with root rot and with their Hoyas not doing well because this holds way too much moisture for too long. It's going to suffocate the roots of your Hoya. So let me show you um, how that happens. For each of these I'm going to weigh the cups when they're dry and then I'm going to squirt water into the cup until I start to see drops come out of the bottom because that is how you should water your Hoyas. You should water them thoroughly until you see water come out of the bottom because you want the entire cup to be uh, evenly moist. So I'm just going to reweigh it and see how much moisture each substrate will hold. And I did weigh each of these cups before I put any water into them, but I edited out that part because it seemed to be a little redundant. Now this one took a really long time to get drops to come out the bottom, and I ended up not even wetting it evenly around the whole cup, I noticed after when I was weighing it, so I could have even added more water but um what really surprised me was how much moisture the perlite held i expected that to run through a lot faster but holding 62 grams was pretty high compared to the others and the sphagnum moss held quite a bit of water but that i expected okay so we're done with that and if i could do this again i would have done a better job totally saturating the entire pot of this because I think I just squirted it until I started to see drops come out but I think I just happened to squirt it near one of the holes but you still get the point it went through this really fast and went out the drainage holes um, on this one it still got uh, a dry side and it was by far the heaviest pot out of all of these and that's super heavy um, yeah, don't use that. <laughs> don't do this, please. Uh, unless you're going to put a ton of perlite in there. So yeah, there it is. Um, I'd say you can use any of these options, except just don't use this straight out of the bag. And you'll be good to go. Um, you can mix these in any combination that you like. If you're really not sure what to use and you've got several options, just go ahead and toss them all in a big bin and mix them together. And it'll probably be great. So that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful. Um, watch out for a video coming up on how to root Hoyas, how to take the cutting, how to prepare it, and then um, how to get it rooting. 
but I wanted to make this video first on substrates before I moved on to taking cuttings and rooting them. All right, I hope you have a good day.